Well, Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you all for coming back. Uh, good to see you. It felt like a long time since we've been together and glad we're together again and a good group here today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's a great day to be a Kiwanian. Absolutely a great day. And kids need Kiwanis and Kiwanis needs you. Now, let's say our defining statement. Kiwanis, Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world, one child and one community at a time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's have a song. Where's Clay? Clay, there you are. And what's the rendition today? I am finally back. All right, in the books, page 11, song 27, I think you know it, it's commonly known as America. And we'll start on this pitch. Da, 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 da. My country, tis uh, the sweet land of liberty of the I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom reign. Thank you. Our invocation will be by L. Poole. Good afternoon, everyone. You bow your heads, please. Father God, we thank you for another uh, year, all of us making it to see 2023. Uh, we thank you for friends and, and fellowship. Help us to continue to do the, the work um, that is so important to kids in this community. Uh, kids need Kiwanis and we need each other. Uh, again, Lord, thank you for the food. Uh, may it be used for the nourishment of our bodies and uh, help us to, again, dedicate ourselves to your service, amen. Courtney, would you introduce our guest or? Yes, I'll be happy to. Um, I would like for Jason Wait. Tyler to stand up, please. Jason is really not a guest, but he, because he, because he has um, submitted his application. His sponsor is Jefferson Griffin, but I just wanted to make sure we recognized him. We appreciate you. Thank you. And he's from a family of Kiwanians, too, and we appreciate that. Do we have any other guests today? Yes. Well, Happy New Year to everyone. I am proud to have with me today my husband, Dave Ospinus, who's a professor at NC State. And the reason he really wanted to come today is we are big fans of Wake Tech. And so we wouldn't be anywhere else than here. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, let's move on to membership welfare. I think we're going to have some birthdays on the board in just a minute. Please pay attention to them as you uh, see them on the board. They're not on my screen, but I see them up there. You see who uh, they are. Say happy birthday to those people and all collectively we'll say happy birthday to them also. Let me give you some uh, news items that I know of. Leslie Stanley and Mike are the parents of a new baby. So we want to say uh, congratulations to Leslie. It's a girl, and her name is Cecilia Grace. And she was uh, born just a day or two after Christmas. So Merry Christmas to them. I know it was a, uh, was a good one. Charlie Wheelis is um, still recovering. He hopes to be back in a few weeks with us. Let me say to Courtney, we got a newsletter this week, and it was one of the great newsletters that I've ever seen. And we appreciate her kind work, although she's interim editor of it, she's doing a lot of hard work to get it just right. So thank you so much, Courtney, for what you're doing. We appreciate that. And let me make this sad announcement, if you've not heard it, that our fellow member, John Church, died this week. His funeral will be tomorrow at 11 a.m at Christ Church downtown, Christ Episcopal, and hope all that can attend will attend. Please remember his family, his wife Emery, in your prayers. He was certainly a great Kiwanian. I remember uh, my first meeting, he invited me to sit at the table, and I later found out it was the table where the 
older members sat and they uh, <laughs> kind of looked at me strange, but uh, as I got a little more gray in my head, they didn't have any problem with me being there. But it was a good group of folks. I really enjoyed them, always enjoyed um, John. Uh, yes, ma'am. I have one membership uh, welfare. Craig Medden, who is a member of our club, had another knee replacement surgery over Christmas, so we want to keep him in our prayers. Okay. We need volunteers for greeters next week. Who will volunteer to be a greeter? Put your hand up. Okay. Gary, thank you so much. And we will need uh, greeters in future weeks. Let me know if you want to. And hopefully this will be the last time I'm presiding until I, I preside. But well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. Uh, but uh, Stacy, by no fault of her own, has had business um, uh, engagements twice at the end of the year and once at the beginning of the year. So uh, I've been here with you. You all have been very kind to me, and I appreciate that so much. But we expect uh, Stacy to be back next week. And I think she's online with us today. Her picture doesn't show, but she's hearing what we've got to say. Stacy, we miss you. Hurry on back. And let me call on Robert Cooper to announce our winner of the contest that we just had to for the number of new members that came in. All righty. I have a $250 gift certificate uh, to the Angus Barn for the person that brought in the most new members from October through the end of the year. And unfortunately, uh, we have a tie. Uh, Leanne Saunders, are you here? She brought in Chris Saunders. Garrett Pendleton brought in Chris Dillon. Buck Lattimore brought in Hal Edwards. Robert Cooper, I brought in Susanna, stand up please. And uh, Jefferson Griffin brought in Jason Tyson. So it was a tie. And uh, the committee um, drew names and Gary Pendleton is the winner. Thank you. And, and okay. Okay. Um, anybody uh, want to have a similar contest in the future? It's a lot of fun. Bye. Well, Robert, we, are, we appreciate Robert getting that $250 gift certificate for us. And that drawing was supervised by an accounting firm downtown. So we have witnesses that it went legally, okay? Are there any other announcements to be made? I do have one here, January the 27th, we're serving at the Salvation Army. So if you can serve at the Salvation Army in the, in the serving line, please volunteer. Now, Phil Kirk will introduce our speaker for today. First, thanks to Lee Parker for being willing to be seen in public with Gary Pendleton. I, I was afraid he wouldn't be able to get anybody to go with him, so. That's good. Our speaker today is Dr. Scott Rawls, the fourth president of Wake Tech, which is the largest community college in North Carolina, having between 70,000 and 75,000 students each year. In fact, it's larger than if you add the enrollments of NC State and UNC Chapel Hill, uh, Wake Tech is the largest and I'll dare say the best. Um, um, Scott has served as president of the Craven Community College in Newburn and also as president of the North Carolina System of Community Colleges. He left the top position in North Carolina 17 years ago uh, to become president of Northern Virginia Community College, which is the second largest multi-campus community college in the United States. He returned to North Carolina three years ago uh, as president of Wake Tech, which is recognized for many winning strategies, particularly connecting workforce and education opportunities and is also ranked as the national leader in online education. Scott has testified uh, before Congress many times and is on a number of very important national higher education groups. He earned his bachelor's degree at UNC Chapel Hill 
and master's and doctoral degrees in industrial and organizational psychology from the University of Maryland. He's the recipient of numerous awards, including the Distinguished Public Service Award, the North Carolina Chamber, from the North Carolina Chamber, and the Order of the Longleaf Pine. And most of you, if not all of you, have been especially generous to Wake County, or Wake Tech, by passing five bond issues uh, in the last two decades. That's in a, in a totaling over a billion dollars. And that's in addition to uh, appropriations from the General Assembly, which has been very good to the community college system, and also from the county commissioners who've been the same. And this recognizes the leadership over the years of uh, Steve Scott and, and now Scott Rawls. Now, as you know, I try to find out a fact or two uh, about our speaker that you may or may not know. While at Northern Virginia Community College, he was the boss of First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, the wife of our president, who was the vice president at the time. Dr. Biden was and is a part-time faculty member. Also, not quite as high up as that, uh, Bob Goodell was involved in hiring Scott uh, in the Department of Commerce many years ago. And on a personal note, you did train him, you take it, you overtrained him, okay. Well, maybe you can help some of the rest of us. On a, <laughs> I was gonna say something nice about you, but scratch that. <laughs> On a personal note, two of my daughters have attended Wake Tech, a niece teaches there, and a granddaughter plans to enter Wake Tech this fall. Also, their standards are not very high for faculty members, uh, Buck Lattimore, uh, teaches a uh, auctioneering class uh, at, at Wake Tech. The standards are much higher for the president, and we're very proud to have a successful, very successful president of Wake Tech, uh, Scott Rawls, with us today. Well, thank you, Phil, and good afternoon. It's wonderful to see everyone. Let me see if I can get this going. There we go. Oops, I'm too good. Well, I'm a little more intimidated today than I usually would be. I do a lot of these types of speeches, have for a lot of time, a lot of many years, but this one's a little more intimidating because there's a room full of legends in this, in this audience who know some of the topic matter much better than I do. So Phil, who, Phil and Gary Pendleton were on the state board when I was coming in. As, Bob, as noted, Bob hired me uh, when he was Assistant Secretary of Commerce, and I was Director of the Employment Training Division. Buck, and I know there are other folks who have taught at Wake Tech and... Uh, you know, just folks who know Wake Tech, Cynthia, Cynthia Ball and Dave Apney, not only, Cynthia doesn't only support us in the legislature, just like I, I saw John Alexander come in, who I used to go and lobby about community colleges, but such a great supporter, but also financially, uh, some of our greatest, uh, best personal donors to our teaching education programs. So a lot of people who have built Wake Tech, made it what it is. And so I'm very honored and proud to be here to talk to you about Wake Tech. I may tell some stories that you may know don't correct me on my stories because I like them the way they are right now. So, uh, so if I if I stretch it a little bit, but I'm very excited to be at Wake Tech. I am entering uh, almost four years now at Wake Tech. Uh, two of those years were COVID years, and COVID years are like dog years. So that really should be like 16 years worth of service. But it it's a wonderful place. And the thing that's so unique to me about Wake Tech is, you know, you, people in Wake County know Wake Tech. Um, but you have to really step back and look at Wake Tech. And when I look at Wake Tech and given who I am, a workforce person, a community college person, being at Wake Tech is the pinnacle of where you could be for someone who does what I do. Wake Tech, in my opinion, is not just North Carolina's largest community college, uh, but Wake Tech, in my opinion, is one of the most workforce forward, technology focused colleges of any type in the country. And I believe the most comprehensive opportunity college in the United States. And I'll try to share with you why I think that's the case. But let me take you on a little tour of Wake Tech and uh, where we are, where we're going. But to talk about where we're going, I have to talk about where we came from. Because where we came from, and particularly with the legends in the room today, everything that we're doing right now is not something that just happened in the last two or four years. It was because of our history, because of our support that was very unique in this community about why we were created. And we are still just as focused on those, those uh, guideposts of why we were created as we ever were. So let me take you back a little bit in that history because you have to understand a little bit of that to understand where we're going today. So 
let's go back to the mid 1950s in North Carolina. At that time, North Carolina was the second poorest state in the nation. Uh, two thirds per capita income for North Carolinians in the United States. Um, we still had the same state motto, Essie Quam Videri. I love this motto, to be rather than to seem. Unofficial state motto was thank God for Mississippi because only Mississippi was, we're only ahead of Mississippi in that. So uh, at that time, a governor, very unique governor, Governor Hodges came to, he was, later became known as the economic development governor, had two what were then seen as crazy ideas to further our state through education, one of which was to create this unique research park in the middle of Pine Forest between three great universities. It was called Research Triangle Park. The other idea was to create a network of what was called industrial education centers. If you're gonna have jobs different from textiles, tobacco and furniture, you gotta have a way to train people to do those things that are different than what we had at the time. That's where industrial education centers came from. The story I've heard is there was a house in Raleigh and on one floor were the university folks working on the, um, on Research Triangle Park, what became Research Triangle Park. On the, other, on the other floor was this group of business people that were brought in to create this new system of industrial education centers. And we became one of those first industrial, industrial education centers, what was called Holding Tech. Holding Tech in, you know, in our original Southern campus where Holding Hall is, and that's why we were created around the idea of economic mobility, economic mobility for everyone at that time. And then right behind it, as we were being dedicated, was a even a bigger vision for us. Um, and this was that education beyond high school should be accessible to everyone, regardless of where you live, regardless of what your economic status, any for, education should be for everyone. And so there was governor at that time, Terry Sanford, but particularly a chairman of the Department of Education named Dr. Dallas Herring, who we consider our philosophical godfather in community colleges who came along with this idea that we should be everywhere. That's why there are so many community colleges and we should be as accessible as possible. And as we like to say at Wake Tech, we take the top 100%. Uh, we're as proud of our inclusivity as Duke is proud of their exclusivity. That's who we are at Wake Tech, but it came from those roots. And the, um, and the, the saying, the motto, which became our motto for community colleges, Dr. Dallas Herring you know, said this at our dedication at Wake Tech and he said this throughout the state is to take people where they are and carry them as far as they can go. Now at Wake Tech about four years ago, we in our strategic plan, we call it reach and rally. We've tweaked that a little bit, but it goes back to these roots of economic mobility and access to higher education for everyone. And so we have a vision that we put forward and you'll see that that vision falls in line with take people where they are, but it's a little different. A couple of words we tweak. We will reach students in every area of Wake County and we will rally around them to go as far as their dreams, talents, and resilience will take them. That is what we do at Wake Tech. Two differences there. So instead of taking students, as Dr. Herring said, we realize for many students and many families in our community, they, we just can't wait till they find us and get to us. We have to get out there and help them get to us. And so we reach students wherever they are, and that's part of our reach strategies. And if you ever go to one of our graduations, you will know that we don't carry any student across that graduation stage. In fact, at our recent graduation, there was a student who was so eager, he, he, he came barreling out there tripping, and that fell right in my arms. And we, I grabbed him, and we were sitting there hugging in front of everybody. And I said, look, he's, go do it again. Came out, he's, the whole room started clapping. So, but our students, they're so, when they get to graduation, they propel themselves across the stage. But to get to that point, we have to rally around them. We have to do things that others do not in often cases. So it's our reach strategies, it's our rally strategies. And then it's also what we call laddering. We see ourselves as our region's ladder college. And I'll tell you what we mean by that and the strategies that we use. So. From those roots going back in the late 1950s, early 1960s, here's Wake Tech today. Largest college in North Carolina, uh, enrollment over 70,000. We had 6.5% six six growth yesterday in terms of our new. Had my first parking complaint in three years. I was so thrilled yesterday to get that parking complaint. Um, we now have six campuses building our seventh campus. If you think, go out towards Wendell on I-87 and you see something that looks like a mall that's being built, that's us, that's our seventh campus. Um, two, two, we have two specialty campuses for law enforcement, public safety, and healthcare. 
four early college high schools. So we are a very big place, and, but we also provide a unique ROI that's unique in higher ed. Higher ed is often being questioned now in terms of the return on investment for students. Now you hear about this, uh, only, you know, only healthcare has had a greater rate of inflation in the last, last 20 years than higher ed. And so a lot of people question higher ed these days. Georgetown University did a study this past summer or released it this past summer where they ranked every college in, in every college in the United States, including all the community colleges, every college, in terms of return on investment for the graduates. They used a uh, term net present value, which is essentially looking at students' earnings 10, 20, 30, 40 years later after graduation compared to the cost to go to those schools. And it turned out that the big story for the United States was that at over 30% of America's colleges and universities, more than 50% of the graduates would have been better off 10 years later financially having never gone to those colleges or universities because they were underwater. They had paid so much up front and weren't earning nearly enough to pay off that debt they had incurred. But you could put in every college and university into their little um, data, data bank and Wake Tech comes out as among the top 20% of all colleges and universities in the United States in, in graduate ROI in 10 years, and top 10% of all the colleges and universities in North Carolina. And that's because it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to go to Wake Tech, but because of the skills and the things that you can learn at Wake Tech and the opportunities that exist in this community, you can make a lot of money coming out of the other end. And so that's why Wake Tech put so much investment or has such an economic impact in this community. Over a billion dollars, and this is an independent study that was done just recently, sponsored by the Belk Endowment in Charlotte, but Wake Tech has a billion dollar impact annually on this county. Most of that coming from the wages that students earn after leaving Wake Tech compared to what they would have been earning as they, they went in the door with us at Wake Tech. So we're a very unique college. Um, and we have a big impact, we believe. And you know, one of the things we're being technology focused, um, we we have these amazing facilities and they're very workforce hands-on, but we are also great in terms of online. In fact, we've been ranked for the last two years one of America's top 150 online colleges of every college in the United States, including all the fully online colleges. So you know, Wake Tech's a unique place, and it didn't happen because of me. I've only been there four years, but it's because it's so unique is why I wanted to be at Wake Tech. And our goal is to just keep furthering this great uh, cycle of growth that's happening in our community, opportunity in our community, but opportunity for everyone in our community. And that's the way we define ourselves. So if you look at our community now and you go back to that history, you know, our region, the Research Triangle region has been in many ways pushed along, a uh, catalyst has been higher ed. You know, the great universities that are here, you know, Research Triangle Park, other things have, the hospitals have been catalysts for people to move in. And every day now in Wake County, there's 67 people a day moving into Wake County. Now, you, you feel that, you know that, you can see that in housing costs, you can see that in terms of the traffic on the streets in different places. And there is no doubt that this region has been, is one of the most successful magnets as an economy of any place in the United States. Only Austin, where I'm going on Monday uh, to see our new friends from Apple on Monday, only Austin is growing faster than, than this county in terms of metropolitan regions. But the challenge is this, you know, as successful as we are as a magnet, we still have some challenges as a ladder, as a ladder to opportunity. So if you look at all the positive economic rankings that you could possibly have, Wake County's in the top five of everything, except there's one area we were ranked in the bottom five of, of the 100 metropolitan regions in 2017 by an economist, Raj Chetty. At that time he was at Stanford, now he's at Harvard. And Chetty did something unique. He was able to uniquely connect IRS data to a variety of different other data points and, and rank every community in terms of economic mobility. And by economic mobility, it was defined as the likelihood that you would grow up poor, be poor as an adult, if you grew up poor as a child. Could you get out of poverty as an adult if you grew up a place as a child? And in that area, Wake County and Raleigh area, unfortunately it ranks among the worst areas in the country. Many areas in North Carolina are that way. 
And so I don't know, you know, that whole why that's the case, but one of the things we have said at, at Wake Tech is our role, as much as any institution, to do everything we can to change that. We are not a college like State, like Carolina, like Duke, that people are going to move here from California, Texas, or whatever to go to Wake Tech, although we do have people from all over who come to Wake Tech. We're not the ones who are going to pull people in, but more so than any other institution in this community, we're the institution to pull people up. And that's why we call ourselves our region's ladder college, and we take strategies around workforce laddering. So these great opportunities that are there in life science and IT and all the areas that are so prosperous right now, you don't have to move here for those opportunities. You can move up the, it, to those opportunities. And the biggest way that happens in our community is through Wake Tech. So let me tell you about some of our strategies. One is our reach strategy. You heard me talk about reach and rally. So we've got to get out there. So our, our community is not the same. Wake County is a very big place. I mean, you're talking about Wake Forest. You know, go from Wake Forest to Apex. You know, and we're a big growing place of the 50, of the 50 municipalities and 50 largest municipalities in North Carolina now, nine are in Wake County. So we're growing, but you know, prosperity and opportunity is not the same in every community, uh, particularly in the eastern and some of the southern parts of our community. So we're we're trying to target where we can. Uh, we reach everywhere, but for instance, in our Title I high schools, we're putting counselors into those Title I high schools because at those high schools, high schools like Eastern Wake. Nightdale, um, Southeast, Garner, students go at, to college at a 50% rate, approximately, compared to about 90% in Cary and in Green Hope. And so we're trying to, to be more engaged in some of those areas. Um, we're reaching out to places like our, our move east, our big move to Wendell. Why? Because that's the, air, that's the fastest growing area of our county, but it's also the area that has the most educational need. And so that's why we're putting so much investment into going east. Um, we're partnering with groups like communities and schools, the Boys and Girls Club and others in terms of how do we get to kids and students and families who may not think about college to get to them. That's our reach strategies. And then when students come to us, we have to rally around them, as we say. And so that's why we have to do things that you don't see at other colleges, because we have more lower income students than other colleges. Uh, that's just the particular role of community college. And so, and we have students who do not come from families where necessarily someone from their family went to college. That's not always the case at our, our schools. So we have to do more about advising. So we now have where every student will have an advisor and every advisor knows their students and even having care teams built around students. We have summer bridge programs where students who struggled a little bit in high school can get that jump start in summer and start right in the fall semester. We're putting care centers on every single campus where we have student success coaches, where you can get emergency aid. If you have that $400 car bill that's gonna keep you from getting to school, we'll figure that out. Technology in terms of our laptops. We have food, not only food pantries on every campus, but if you tell us what you need in terms of hunger, and we have many students that are hungry every day, we will, get, we will take the food to you. So those are the types of things that are rally strategies. And we're doing things like free bus passes for every student because transportation can be a barrier. Even we donated land back to the county for affordable housing, but 30% of the affordable housing will go to Wake Tech students. So those are our rally strategies. But what I was quickly gonna to talk to you about is we are unique in terms of the workforce development role. And for us, we have a, a particular philosophy about it that's I think somewhat unique. We call it ladder economics. It's we have a variety of programs. We have more programs than you could imagine. If you were at our southern campus right now, you could see the largest game development program in the, in, in the whole state. You could see the best ag tech program in one of the three best in North America. You could, the largest culinary program. It's, but it's not just the breadth of programs. What makes us unique is that you can get from one place to the next and climb a really high ladder. And so for us, what that means is for many working adults, they may need, and they may not have time for a full degree, but if we can get them a short-term skill with a certification that can get them a foothold, we call them foothold programs, into the workplace, they can get a job, but with those certifications, we can give them credit back towards a degree so they can get that job, but keep moving up. 
We have 3,000 high school students who take courses with us in particular pathways, and we have four early colleges. So, for instance, our newest early college in information technology and biotech, you can get that degree start and even sometimes finish your community college degree with us and get that start in high school. Connect it to our degrees. Make sure that our degrees, we're one of the fastest growing apprenticeship colleges in the United States right now. We have 90 Wake County employers that we're working with on apprenticeship thanks to a unique program and that connects students to the workplace. And then it's the tie-in with our great pu public and private universities. So very strategic partnerships so you can get these practical skills in many cases, but keep moving forward to a four-year degree. You don't have to make the choice uh, I'll get a couple of examples. Uh, we have two universities that are now co-locating with us. East Carolina University, so a student I was talking to yesterday is in construction management, but he can go on and get a four-year degree at ECU in construction management or industrial technology, but at Wake Tech and never leave Wake Tech, or North Carolina A&T in IT and biotech, and our great partnership with NC State in terms of engineering. So for us, laddering means you don't have to choose, but it's not a choice between college and technical. It's the and choice. But as long as you can keep climbing that ladder, you can go as high as you want to. And that's what makes us unique. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how you help make us unique. And, and much of that is you voted for our most recent bond. 70% um, of the people in Wake County has, uh, has been the course, voted for that bond. It, when you vote and you support Wake Tech, you're not only supporting us, you're supporting these opportunities and you're supporting the programs and partnerships. I'll give you a few examples. Here's from our most recent bond. This is a facility we just opened at our RTP campus. On the second floor is this early college high school. On the third floor is the biotech program where students, is, it's a hub not only for, you know, the students are coming through, but I can't tell you how many employers walk through and states. We, we hosted a governor who spent two hours looking at this facility just a few months ago, and a governor from another state. So you make these kind of opportunities unique for us. We now have, thanks to your support of the last bond, the best automotive training facility on the East Coast, the Hendrick Center for Automotive Excellence. And we've doubled the number in just two years of automotive technicians that we're training through Wake Tech. We opened the Center for uh, Building Technologies, HVAC, HVAC electrical programs. We're also now expanding our welding and commercial refrigeration. Uh, we have the only Mitsubishi train, um, training center in the United States at a community college at this facility. With, we're opening our new Eastern Campus. We'll have one of the most, we're the largest provider of law enforcement and public safety training in North Carolina. And this facility will be a unique facility for the, for the United States. It's a, essentially a little city within a building where you can drive a fire truck and, and has a little school in there and you can reenact all these scenarios in a very unique way and pull together all the different communities of public safety in terms of unique reenactments. These are the kinds of things that your support ha helps. Uh, this facility, our new technology facility, will be the hub for our biopharma program. So all the big biopharma, it's like Fujifilm and others that we were talking about, uh, Securus and Amgen and others, that's where this training occurs. And, and Siemens, manufacturing, robotics, all of these programs in this facility. Uh, our neck with this last bond, the, the biggest emphasis will be on our healthcare. We have a healthcare campus tied to Wake Med. Over a third of the funding will go towards that. So expansion of our programs in areas like um, cardiovascular sonography, respiratory therapy, but expansion of what's the largest nursing program and imaging programs in this region. And so that's going to be growing at Wake Med. Uh, we have to have a bigger site in our southern area, so we're relocating our southern campus to a new site near uh, between where Apex and Holly Springs come together to support the workforce training that's there. I could go on and on with these specific programs. It's a unique place. Wake Tech is so unique in terms of the programs because of the way they connect to the workforce and because of the way our workforce is so unique here and the opportunities that exist in this community that don't exist other places. But I want to quickly end the, talking somewhat about the students because 
to understand Wake Tech, it's not about seeing these huge campuses, these beautiful buildings, these remarkable workforce programs, but understanding the economic mobility that we have in terms of student impact. So real quickly, going around the circle here, I'll tell you about four students that I met four years ago during my first semester at Wake Tech and where they are today. At the bottom right is a young man named Eddie Mutebi. Eddie grew up in Uganda in an orphanage. Um, he went into the orphanage because he, was this, he had been abused as a kid, ended up in a Ugandan orphanage, found his way to the United States, found his way, if you know Billy Redmond from Trademark Properties. Billy took Eddie in. He came to Wake Tech. Eddie got enrolled in Wake Tech. And when I met him, he was an ambassador of Wake Tech. But you can see there with his graduation robes, that was a party I attended when Eddie he went on from Wake Tech, was a remarkable student, and graduated in data science from NC State University, now works at IBM. Uh, to, uh, just above Eddie is a young woman I met, Tiffany Harrell. Tiffany was one of our computer programming students, a remarkable student, IT student, and she worked at Lenovo in a workforce and um, apprenticeship program we have with Lenovo. Um, Tiffany's story was she was a, a a foster youth and back in the days before we had our our fostering bright futures foster youth program tiffany when she uh, was a foster youth she came to wake tech over 20 years ago uh, to get her ged she had had to move so many times as a foster youth never could finish high school didn't have enough money to go to college so she went back out um, she uh, she was a remarkable uh, computing uh, taught herself computing got married had five kids came back to Wake Tech into our computer programming program, was blowing it away, and then her husband died. So she had to leave again, had five kids, trying to figure out how to do it. Got stabilized, came back to Wake Tech, and did so well in our computer programming program. She was our number one student, and now she works at Lenovo full time. And I've tried to hire Tiffany back to Wake Tech, but I cannot afford her anymore. Someday I think I'll get her back, but I cannot afford Wait, Tiffany at Wake Tech right now. Michael Denning, you see there in the middle with this huge smile. Michael was a kid who grew up in uh, Garner and was part of the Southeast Raleigh Promise program. Michael's story is his, his parents told him in the eighth grade they didn't know how they could afford to send him to college. And so Michael, he resourceful kid, he got online, found our early college high school for health care. And when, by the time he graduated from that program, where he also got his Wake Tech degree, he had so much credit that when he transferred to ECU, he finished his MBA while everyone else was finishing their bachelor's degree. And then during COVID, he went to Columbia University and got an accelerated master's in public health. Now he's in his second year in the medical school at ECU. So by the time Michael's 26, he's going to have his MD, MBA, and master's in public health. And then my favorite graduation story from this year was Khadija Scarborough. So Khadija, we have a unique program at Wake Tech that many of you probably were instrumental in helping start called Fostering Bright Futures for foster youth. Foster youth have a, a college graduation rate of 6% nationwide. But thanks to the support of Fostering Bright Futures, that doesn't have to be the case for us. And we, we wrap ourselves around the, our students who are foster youth students. One of those is Khadija Scarborough. So Khadija was a foster youth student, came to Wake Tech. You can see a picture of her three, three years ago when I first met her, and then most recently. And you can see a picture from just a few weeks ago at her nursing pinning ceremony. So she not only has graduated from us, she graduated from our nursing program. And you know, huge battle to get Khadija. She's going to Johns Hopkins where she's going to be a, 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 an ER nurse, a pediatric ER nurse at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Someday we'll get Khadija back here as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you see us, you see facilities, you see our workforce programs, you see the scale. And that's incredibly, to me, somebody who's just you know, only recently been, been a part of Wake Tech. To me, that's incredibly impressive. But when you see these stories, this is what Wake Tech's about. And it's thanks to the folks like you, the folks who have built community colleges, who have taught at community colleges, who support community colleges, both uh, in terms of bond votes or legislative or personal financial. And so, you know, what happens at Wake Tech, you will not find in other parts of the country. And it is thanks to the people of Wake County. So as much as anything, I'm here to say thank you to you all for making Wake Tech what it is today. Thank you.
Dr. Rawls, I have a question. Um, what kind of accommodations or um, provisions do you have for kids that have IEPs in high school and that need extra support yeah. in, in the higher education? Well, you know, and that comes through our care center. So there's, there's not necessarily, I think, a direct connection of the, uh, of the actual IEP in the high school, but we have all the same kind of wraparounds. And that's where we particularly, you know, whether, you know, what, you know, there, there are all the issues for students, any types of disability services in that regard. But beyond that, you know, we have these remarkable tutoring centers at every campus. And it's not just math and English tutoring. I was talking to one of our math tutors the other day, and I did not realize she has a PhD in math from MIT. She just came to us today. And she's in our math tutoring center. Um, but tutoring centers, all the emergency aid support. So there's not necessarily a direct connection where we get the student's IEP. They do have to go through a process in terms of any special services around disability. But it's not just a goal for students who have special needs in cases, but it's also to wrap around all students and particularly students who may have financial or other challenges that are going to get in their way. We don't want, you know, we're not a weed out school. We don't lower our standards or our rigor for anyone, but we will rally around every single student that comes through our doors. Dr. Rawls, I have two questions for our, from our Zoom participants. I'm going to ask one of them real quick. I apologize. Uh, Chris White's asking if you have training agreement or partnership to train workers for VinFast in the Chatham County development and, or also Apple here in Wake County. Yeah, what we're doing with VinFast, so the way it works with community colleges, we work as a group. We're 58 community colleges, so VinFast you know, is their primary connection is Central Carolina Community College, but we're working very closely with Central Carolina, as are all the other neighboring colleges, because truthfully, we have to. I mean, what's happening along this kind of central corridor right now is a tremendous opportunity and also a tremendous challenge, because you have Toyota in Greensboro, or Liberty, actually Randolph County, and then right behind it, you've got Wolf Speed in Siler City, and then you've got VinFast, and then you move up to Holly Springs where you've got Fujifilm, Amgen, Securus expansion, move on into Durham. We've got this economic expansion like we've never had before. So as a group of community colleges, we try to partner together to support each other. We've created a partnership with Durham Tech for RTP, where we call RTP Bio. We're, we're, I work very closely with the folks. We work very closely with Central Carolina on VinFast and collaborate together. And that's also part of our strategy for this new campus relocation to Holly Springs Apex area because we'll need that kind of industrial production in that end of the county. Um, this is a statement and uh, a question. Uh, I wanted all the grandparents and parents in this room to know about this. Um, but first of all, community colleges are about getting people jobs. Unlike four-year colleges and universities, they're there to find people jobs. And um, so you current parents and parents need to know about the blessing that we have. Also, would you go into the kind of salaries, high salaries that come out of there with either the one-year certificate or the two-year college transfer program? Sure. Yeah, and it, you know, obviously every field varies. I, I think if you look at it in macro, what that study I referred to from Georgetown is based on that. I mean, it's really saying you don't spend a lot on the front end, but you can make a lot. So if you look at it, like I always say, you can recognize our electricians around town because they're, they're usually ones with the really nice trucks driving boats behind them. Um, I, I will tell you, when we look at some of our, like some of the most difficult hires we have, a good example is we have the best facility for collision repair in the United States, or particularly on the eastern United States right now. But I have struggled mightily to find collision repair instructors, not because they're not out there, but because they make so much money. Uh, one of our instructors told me of a student who uh, was a student of his three years ago at another community college who was making $200,000 a year. Collision, you know, so, and, and collision repair, we used to call it auto body, you know, but, you know, whenever you have a, you ever have a wreck these days, you hit somebody, you think, oh, that's going to be $200. It's never $200, right? Because there are all these sensors and everything that just connects. So, you know, all of these different types of fields have so much opportunity. And that's the great thing about Wake County is we have these tall ladders, you know, as I say, these, you know, biopharma, biotech, IT, you know, they are here, and you can get there through Wake Tech. 
I have two two parts to my question. One, you're training law enforcement officers. We see many bad results where officers are called out to domestic disputes are involving those with mental health issues. Do you have a crisis intervention curriculum involved in training these Yeah, th and that's a big part of their training, and Wake Tech's been a leader in that and helping to, to in fact, um, dealing with, in the past few years, um, those kind of led sort of state, um, that many of the standards for law enforcement training are at a state level. Um, you have certain hours, and we add on additional hours for what's called our BLET, Bureau of Law Enforcement Training, so that a lot of that is involved in those additional hours. Are you um, teaching them to deal with mental health issues? Yes, yeah, right. yeah. They, uh, the law enforcement people that have had that training will tell you right out, it improves their safety and the public yeah. safety. No, absolutely. Second, second part of my question. Have you ever considered running for governor? <laughs> I appreciate uh, maybe that thought, but no, I, I'm someone who can never get elected uh, for that. Um. <laughs> so let me let me ask you uh, this one. Thing. What? Okay. Is it on? Um, you mentioned the construction piece and on one of those slides and somebody said something about electrical contractors and boats. Um, some of my clients are the people that regulate the electrical, the plumbing, mechanical, fire sprinkler contractors. And, and, and the statistic is that say 80% of them are, are in a small business uh, with one, two, three, four trucks, or maybe even just working out of the back of the house. Uh, and we did a study that showed that between 2009 and 2019, the average age of those people, the contractors, I'm not necessarily talking about the guy with the shovel, but the contractors, the average age went up 10 years. And that's because not enough young people are coming that's in. Right. And, and, they, and as a result, those small business people have no one to whom they can sell their business and retire. And so uh, we, I worry that the, that the programs you've got are providing labor for big business, but it's not really reaching the, that segment of the market where 80% of the contractors really are. Well, you may hear about the big ones and read about the big ones, but I would invite you to come visit us at our new Center for Building Technologies because that's what that's all about. Or when you drive around I-440 and you see the, the Wake Tech, I used to call it the big, like a big, it used to look like a big Waffle House. It's a huge facility. Um, but you go into the Lonnie and Carol Poole Foundation Skill Training Lab, that's what that's all about. So nobody puts as much into those areas. So while you may hear about the other things, we are certainly at a core around those skilled trades areas. And um, beyond that, the other thing we're doing as well, you mentioned in terms of entrepreneurship, every one of our programs will have industry employer advisory committees that tell them what to do, but we also try to add entrepreneurship where we can. Now, the owners of the companies oftentimes don't tell us to teach people entrepreneurship because they're not necessarily looking for competitors, they're looking for employees, right? But we, we're the ones behind all the launch programs in Wake County. So if you see Apex launch or Wendell launch or whatever, those programs where people are trying to start new businesses, that's coming through our entrepreneurship programs and our small business programs. So um, you may not hear about it as much, but I guarantee you it is there and we are putting huge investment in those areas. If you look at our investment in facilities, it, Wake Tech is either the, the technicians that keep Wake County running, production technicians, skilled trades technicians, transportation technicians, it's the people that keep our community safe and healthy, nurses, imaging, law enforcement, and then it's also the growth areas for Wake County, IT, biotech, biopharma. Thank you, Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate you being with us today. Okay. Uh, let me uh, say to uh, Jason Tyson and to uh, Cynthia Ball and your husband, Dave, Thank you for being our guest today. And on a sad note, let's adjourn this meeting for a moment of silence, with a moment of silence for our departed member, John Church. <laughs>